The countdown is on until Eclipse Day. As your Eclipse headquarters, we wanted to find out the best way to capture this historic moment. Now, whether you're using a professional camera or just your phone, News 10 NBC's Brianna Collier joins us with some things you need to know to catch this magical event safely. Brianna. Yeah, Deanna, Brett, two key words here, lens and filters. Now, we talked to Damian Spader, who is the technology director at the George Eastman Museum, who says there are a ton of ways to film the eclipse. Now, on April 8th, Rochester is in the prime spot for viewing the eclipse because we are in the path of totality, which means for nearly four minutes, the moon will move in front of the sun, plunging our area into darkness in the middle of the afternoon. The last time this happened was in 1925, and if you want to capture the eclipse on your camera or your phone, filters and lens are important, specifically solar filters that help protect you from the sun as you're shooting. He says it's also a good idea to practice ahead of time to get to know your camera. If you do have a camera without an electronic display, neutral density filters are not enough, like I said, to, to protect our eyes as well. So that UV radiation will still go back and, and hit your retina and uh, still do some damage. And the tricky part about that is that our eyes don't have uh, pain receptors. So there's whatever's happening back there, we won't know until it's too late. Now, Spader also says there are clip-on pieces you can get for your camera lens as well. And on April 8th, the George Eastman Museum will be hosting a viewing with the opportunity for people to build their own solar projectors. Of course, we have everything you need to know to prepare for this exciting day on our website, whec.com slash solar eclipse.